Mr. Lenacic, this is not your first visit to Kiev. What's your impression now after that long winter that everybody dreaded? Can we sigh a sigh of relief? This is my fourth visit to Ukraine since the Russian aggression started, full-scale aggression, uh, February last year. And indeed, uh, we can now say with confidence that uh, uh, Ukraine has successfully overcome the winter, which was no small challenge in view of the fact that Russians were systematically attacking and destroying uh, critical infrastructure, especially the energy infrastructure. Uh, Ukraine has survived, uh, uh, thanks in particular to the resilience of Ukrainian people, thanks also to the effectiveness of the Ukrainian authorities and first responders, responders and emergency workers, and thanks also to the support by the international community, including the European Union. We have been supporting Ukraine since day one of this uh, unjustified aggression. We have provided by now more than 90,000 tons of assistance in civil protection, which includes all kinds of items, in particular items that were required to, uh, to overcome the destruction brought by Russian forces on energy infrastructure. What is needed most now and what have you brought? We have uh, provided uh, a lot of transformers, a lot of repair equipment for the electricity grid. Uh, we have provided thousands of generators that are helping uh, run hospitals, schools, public buildings. And we are already preparing for the next winter because next winter is uh, going to come and we need to prepare for that one too. There have been several corruption scandals goods that have not been used the way they should have been used. How confident are you that the aid you provide really gets where it's needed? We have discussed this with, uh, with the Ministry of the Interior and with the State Emergency Services of the Ukraine, which are our partners in civil protection. And uh, they are going to undergo, undertake an audit. Uh, that's what uh, Minister of the Interior Klimenko told me today. And we are looking forward to receive the uh, outcome of this audit. We on our side, we at the moment do not have uh, any credible indication that there was any diversion of the assistance provided to the European Union civil protection. You've also signed agreements today. This is the biggest EU program on civil protection ever. What's the path forward? Well, uh, we have signed today an agreement between the European Union and Ukraine on accession of Ukraine to the Union civil protection mechanism, meaning with this agreement, Ukraine has now become a fully-fledged participating state in the Union civil protection mechanism. This doesn't mean that it will now be eligible for assistance. It has been eligible for assistance all along, and it has received a lot of assistance. But with this agreement, Ukraine will get its seat at the European table on matters related to civil protection, as if it were already EU member state. In addition, it will also be able to uh, get European Union support and co-financing when it will help others in need of assistance. And Ukraine has already proven its ability to assist others. Most recently, for instance, at the, after the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, when Ukraine dispatched a big search and rescue team at the height of its own fight for survival. This, in our view, is a remarkable display of solidarity by Ukraine. And this is something that, that uh, we are very much looking forward to continue also in the future. So what's your outlook? How, how long and in what measures is this going to continue, this assistance to Ukraine? This assistance will continue as long as necessary. As long as Ukraine needs it, we will find ways to provide it. We hope, of course, that this war would be over sooner rather than later. But it can only be over by making sure that this unjustified and criminal aggression does not succeed.